Hello everyone. My name is Nilata Rao and I'm a PhD student and a PMRF fellow in the Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering, IIT Kanpur. Today, we will continue with the next lecture of the chapter Biomolecules. So, in the last lecture, we started carbohydrate and we saw the classifications of carbohydrate on the basis of different criteria. Among those, one of the most important classification was on the basis of the number of sugar molecules present in a carbohydrate. And on the basis of that, it was divided into four categories. That was monosaccharide, disaccharide, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Then we will briefly started with the structure. So in today's lecture, we will discuss the structure of these carbohydrates in detail. So what we saw in the last class is that the carbohydrates or the sugars have two type of structures, right? So the carbohydrates have two types of structures, two types of structures. Now, what are these two types? The first one is, the first one is open chain. The first type is open chain. And the example you can see here. So it is a linear chain structure. And the second type is the ring structure. The second type is ring structure. Now, in the ring structure also, it has two types based on the type of ring. So we are seeing here two different type of ring, right? Okay. So first, let's see open chain. So what do we have in the open chain? The example that we are seeing here in the open chain is the example of glucose. So it has six carbon molecules, as you can see, and its general formula will be C6S12O6. Now, when this open chain structure, among this open chain structure, when the carbon that has the functional group, it forms a bond with the, any other carbon, it gets converted into the ring form. Okay. So for example, here in the case of glucose, the C1 carbon, it attacks the C5 carbon and the ring kind of structure is formed that we are seeing here, okay? Now, in the ring structure, this first type of the structure, if we see, we can see the structure looks something like this, right? And this structure or this ring is known as pyran ring. And so this structure is known as pyranose and it is derived from, it is derived from, derived from pyran ring, okay? It is derived from pyran ring. Now, how many carbon molecules are present in the ring? So we can see we have one, two, three, four, and five. So the pyran ring is what? It is five carbon ring. It is five carbon ring, right? So this is one type of ring structure. Now, the second type of ring structure is that we are seeing here. So like it was the example of glucose. The second is it is the example of fructose. So the fructose is also six carbon molecule, right? It is six carbon molecule, but the structure, if you see, it has a different structure than that of this uh, glucose. So what is the difference here? So the difference here, we can see if we start numbering. So the numbering here will start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. But inside the ring, you have only four carbon molecules, right? So here, this ring is known as, or this structure is known as furanose. This structure is known as furanose, and it is derived from, it is derived from furan ring. Okay, it is derived from furan ring. And this ring is, if you see, look into the structure. So the ring contains only four carbons, one, two, three, and four. So it is four carbon ring. Okay. So the ring structures are of two types based on the type of rings it consists. So this is about the structure. Now let's discuss about the monosaccharide structure. So in the last lecture we saw the so monosaccharides are one that is only one sugar molecule, only one sugar molecule, right? It has only one sugar molecule. But before moving to the monosaccharide structures, Let's see one term that is known as carbon with carbon because in the upcoming slides, we'll come across this term a lot. So what is carbon with carbon? 
So if we look at the structure here, so what we are seeing, if we look at the structure, we are seeing that there is one carbon, there is one carbon to which the functional group is attached, right? This is the example of glucose, right? Similarly, there is one more structure, open chain structure that is fructose. Here what we are seeing, we are seeing that here also there is one functional group, CO. So the monosaccharides or the carbohydrates consist of two types of functional group, either the aldehyde that is CHO or the CO group, right? Now, what is a carbonyl carbon? So the car this is the carbonyl carbon actually. So carbonyl carbon is the what? what? It is a carbon on which on which carbonyl group is attached. Okay. So the carbonyl carbon is the carbon on which carbonyl group is attached. So in the linear structure, it is very much clear that where the carbonyl group is attached. But what about the ring structure? So if we take the example of glucose, what we are seeing, we are seeing that this CO, this CHO group, it forms bond to CHO, this fifth carbon, right? And if we start numbering, so this is your sixth carbon, right? Because this CS2OH, it is clearly visible in the ring structure as well. This is your CS2OH, right? This is your CS2OH. So this is sixth carbon. This will be your fifth carbon. This will be your fourth. This will be third, second, and first. So what we are seeing that in the case of glucose or in the case of pyranose structures, the carbonyl carbon is here. This is your carbonyl carbon, right? So in the case of glucose, the carbonyl carbon is C1 carbon. In glucose, carbonyl carbon. In glucose, carbonyl carbon is carbon number one, or I'm representing it by C1, right? Now, what about fructose? So in the case of fructose, if you see, this is your uh, open chain structure. So this is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, and six. Now, here what happens? That this CO, it attacks the, it again attacks the fifth carbon, right? And form the ring structure. But in this case, the numbering will start because it has CS2OH first. So the numbering will start from here. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, and this is six, right? So in this carbon, in this case, which is the carbonyl carbon? This one, or carbon second. So in fructose, in fructose, carbonyl carbon will be, or carbonyl carbon is, carbonyl carbon is C2, okay? So in the case of glucose, the carbonyl carbon is C1, while in the case of fructose, the carbonyl carbon is C2. Now, with this background in mind, now let's see certain other terms. So the first term is anomers. So what are anomers? Before that, let's see these structures. Okay. So the first structure here that I have drawn is the structure of glucose, it is just mentioned. So it is a sorry, it is a ring structure of glucose. Okay. Now, the second structure, so this is your this is your first structure, right? And it has the numbering starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, this is your this is your second structure, right? In the second structure, if you see what is the difference between the first and the second structure, the second structure also is of glucose. Okay. But there is certain difference. So if we look Properly, the difference is in this region. The difference is here and in this case, here. Right. This is your edge. So the difference what you are seeing is here. What kind of difference we are seeing? That in one case, the OH is located downward and in the up second case, it is arranged upward. Right. It is arranged upward. So, and it is said that well, then what is the name of these two structures? So the first one, both of these are glucose, but their naming is different. So in the first case, where the OH is below, the OH is below, this is known as alpha glucose. Okay. So this is known as alpha and D glucose. D because I have told in the previous class also that D is because the glucose or the most of the naturally occurring carbohydrates are dextrorotatory. That's why we are writing D. But based on the orientation of OH, it is downward. 
hence it is known as alpha d glucose and in the second case the oh is upward hence it is known as beta d glucose okay and this it is said that this alpha d glucose alpha d glucose and beta d glucose are anomers are anomers okay now next what do we have we have this structure of fructose right we have just seen in the previous slide this is also fructose this is also fructose but it has difference at one position that is clearly mentioned so the position is this one it has difference at this position and what we are seeing in one case the oh is located or is oriented downside and this is known as alpha d fructose and in the second since it is upward it is known as beta d fructose and it is also said that alpha d fructose alpha d fructose and beta d fructose are anomers now the question is what are anomers so what are anomers so what we can see from this or what we, we can say from this uh, thing that there is change in the orientation of hydroxyl group right and this change so anomers you can write that difference in the so these are isomers because they have same chemical formula so anomers are what these are isomers that have change in the orientation that have change in the orientation of hydroxyl group which group is hydroxyl group at one carbon position and what is it carbon position so if you look at the structure this change is not random it is present at a particular carbon position and what is this carbon position this is the carbonyl carbon right from the previous slide if you see these are the carbonyl carbon so anomers are the what these are the isomers that have changed in the orientation of oh group at carbonyl carbon at carbonyl carbon okay so these are anomers now in case of glucose the anomers alpha d glucose and beta d glucose are anomers set right? so alpha d glucose and beta d glucose are anomers set right? at carbon one position carbon one position why because in the case of glucose carbon one is the carbonyl carbon while in the case of fructose so in the case of fructose these are anomers alpha d fructose and beta d fructose are anomers at carbon two position because in the case of fructose second carbon is the carbonyl carbon okay so this is about anomers now the next thing that we'll see is epimers okay again what are epimers we'll see with example so the structure that you are seeing here is what this structure so it is six carbon ring right it has 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 carbon and it has oh on the top or i have orientation above the plane so this oh this structure will be called as beta d glucose right this is called as beta d glucose now now let me draw one structure so there is one structure that looks something like this okay this structure looks something like this it has oh h oh h similar to what i have just drawn oh h and oh h now if you look at the structure we have the numbering 1 2 3 4 5 5 and 6 if you look at the structure of glucose and this structure what difference can we observe so the difference that we can observe by looking at this structure is at one point right so the structure difference is at this position in this case the orientation and in this case the what is the orientation so this is the fourth position right and this structure is known as beta d galactose this is known as beta d galactose now it is said that that beta d glucose or you can simply write glucose and 
गैलेक्टोज आर एपीमर्स आर एपीमर्स ओके नाउ लेट मी ड्रॉ एनदर स्ट्रक्चर लेट मी ड्रॉ एनदर स्ट्रक्चर सो दिस वन इज बीटा डी गैलेक्टोज नाउ यू हैव वन मोर स्ट्रक्चर समथिंग लाइक दिस ओके सो यू हैव सी एस टू ओ एच एच ओ एच एच ओ एच ओ एच एच एंड ओ एच एच नाउ if you look at this structure and compare this structure with the beta d glucose structure what at what position we can observe the difference so the position at which we can observe the difference see here we can number 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so the difference will be let me use different pen so what can uh, what difference we can observe so the difference will be if we compare this structure difference will be here and here right in this case the oh is above the plane and while in the uh, glucose case it is down and this structure this structure is known as beta d mannose this structure is known as beta d mannose okay and it has difference at a certain carbon position and it is also known as that glucose and Manos are epimers. Okay, are epimers. So, by this, if someone asks that what are what what is epimer? So, by looking at this, what we can write? So, what are epimers? We are seeing that these all these three structures have same same chemical formula, right? What is difference? There is difference in their structure. So, epimers are again if they have same chemical formula and different structure. these are this will be isomers right so epimers are also isomers in which in which there is change in the there is change in the orientation of orientation of hydroxyl group right hydroxyl group where at any carbon right at any carbon any one not okay at any one carbon but apart from or except carbonyl carbon right except carbonyl carbon why carbonyl carbon because if the change will be at the carbonyl carbon that will be known as that will be known as anomaly right so what are epimers epimers are basically the isomers in which there is change in the orientation of hydroxyl group at any one carbon except the carbonyl carbon okay for example in the case of glucose and galactose these are epimers why because they have change at the position of carbon fold so glucose and galactose are epimers at carbon fourth position right at carbon fourth position why the glucose and mannose are epimers at carbon of second position Hey, at second position of the carbon, right? So this is about the epimers. Now the question is: Is galactose and mannose also epimer? So if you look at the structure, so what differences can we observe? We can observe one difference here, right? At the second position, at the second position, there is a change in the orientation of galactose and mannose. Why? The second difference will be at position fourth. That is, in this galactose, the OH is upward, while the in mannose the oh is downward but are these epimers the answer is no why because in the case of this what we have studied about the definition of epimer that the change should be at one carbon and in this case the change is at two carbon right so we can write galactose and mannose galactose and mannose are not epimers because in this case the changes are at two positions okay so this is about epimer and along with this we have also seen the structures of galactose and mannose so those are also a uh, uh, what these are also six carbon sugar molecules right now next thing that we we'll see so till now we saw the structure of glucose galactose and mannose 
and these three are were six carbon sugars. Now let's see the structure of a five carbon sugar. So the five carbon sugar, the one of the example is ribose. So this is the example of ribose. Ribose is a five carbon sugar. Okay. So this will be your H. This will be your H. This will be your H. And if you start numbering, the one, two, three, four, and this is a fifth carbon. So it is five carbon sugar. And if you look at this linear structure, how it will be? So the linear structure will be like this. One, two, three, four, five. So yes, two, OH, right? So this is the linear structure of, this is the linear structure of uh, ribose. Now, in the case of ribose, where is the carbonyl carbon? This one. So this is your carbonyl carbon. This is the carbonyl carbon. First carbon is a carbonyl carbon. Okay. Now, with the help of this ribose, uh, the, our body can derive one more sugar, and this sugar has a structure something like this. So the ribose, the formula will be C five H ten O five. Right. Now, with the help of ribose, one more sugar can be produced, and this sugar will look something like this. This will look something like this. Okay. This will look something like this. It has O, it has OH, H, H, and H. So the difference is at carbon second, right? At carbon second, instead of OH, instead of this OH, it has only H. So it do not have this oxygen molecule. And because of this, it is known as deoxyribose. Deoxyribose is present in our DNA. We will see this when we will study about nucleic acid. So for now, this is the structure of deoxyribose, and it do not have hydroxyl at second position of the uh, this ring. Okay, and the deoxyribose is derived from ribose, and it is also known as derived sugar. It is known as derived sugar. And what will be the formula of deoxyribose? The formula will be C five H ten. And since it does not have one oxygen molecule, it will become O4. So this is about the structure of monosaccharides. Now, just to remember, I have summarized all the structures here. So the first two structures that we are seeing is, the first two structures that we are seeing is what? The first one is OH is below. So it's alpha glucose. I'm skipping writing D. So it should be already understood. So it's alpha glucose. And the second structure since OH is above, so this is beta glucose, right? The here is the structure this is also six carbon, but it has furan ring, so it is fructose, right? And since OH is downward or below, so it, it will be alpha fructose, and this will be OH is above, so it will be beta fructose, beta fructose. Now here, what do we have? We have this OH it is on it is six carbon, but the OH at fourth position, the OH at fourth position is above. So this is what, and this OH at first position is also above. That makes it alpha galactose, right? Sorry, beta galactose. That makes it beta galactose. And if we want to draw the structure of alpha galactose, everything will be same, right? Everything will be same, except here the OH will be down, right? And this OH is up. So this will become your alpha galactose. Right? Now, what is the next structure? So this structure, how many carbon molecules do we have? We have one, two, three, four, and five. So this is five carbon molecule and is pyron, uh, sorry, uh, furan ring. So it is what? It is known as ribose. And since OH is ever, this carbonyl carbon OH is ever, it will become beta ribose. While in the second case, it should be like this. It should be OH and H. Okay. It should be OH and H. And hence it will become alpha ribose. So these are all the important structures of the monosaccharide that you should remember that how these structures, these structures are made. Now, the next thing that we will study is about the reducing and non-reducing sugars. So what are reducing and non-reducing sugars? 
so as we know what a what is term reducing means it means that it it is reducing something or it is causing the gain of electron from somewhere right now what so this carbohydrates or the sugar molecules they gives this test they give this uh, reducing they have this ability some of the sugar molecules have the ability to reduce something while others don't okay how we uh, know this so for this we use certain reagents okay so the reagents reagents to test reducing ability of sugar so there are reagents to test the reducing ability of sugars okay so mainly there are two type of uh this reagent so first one is known as felling reagent the first one is known as felling reagent and the second is known as tollens reagent second is known as tollens reagent now what do we have in the felling reagent so in the felling reagent originally it has cupric ion that is cu2 plus it is the cupric ion now when a sugar or anything reduces this so it will reduce mean it will accept electrons right so the charge will decrease so it will become cuprous ion okay so in felling reagent upon reduction the cupric ion gets converted into the cuprous ion while in the case of tollens reagent it consists of silver ion okay and this silver ion upon reduction so when it's electron upon reduction it becomes silver right so these are the two reagents and when these are reduced they change the color or they give certain color give color and on the basis of color one say that the the reagent is reducing or not okay so the test molecule or the sugar is uh, reducing or not okay now so what does reducing sugars do so the reducing sugars reducing sugars what they do they reduces definitely they will reduce this reagents they reduce felling and tollens reagent which means that it will convert this reducing sugars will convert this cuprous ion cupric ion and silver ion into cuprous and silver cupric and also uh, cuprous and silver right now why some of the sugars does this while others don't so the sugars they reduce this reagent because because they have free carbonyl group because these sugars have free they have free carbonyl carbon so not group they are free carbonyl carbon now what do i mean by free carbonyl carbon free carbonyl carbon means free carbonyl carbon means that they are not involved in any bond formation so they are not involved not involved in any bond formation okay they are not involved in any bond formation so if you look at these structures now these are the major monosaccharide structures right so this is your carbonyl carbon this is your sorry this is your carbonyl carbon right this is your carbonyl carbon so if you see any of these carbonyl carbon none of these carbonyl carbons are involved in any other bond formation right these are not involved in bond formation so if we talk about the examples of reducing sugars so the examples of reducing sugars are all monosaccharides all monosaccharides why because none of these monosaccharides carbonyl carbon is not free every right they have free carbonyl carbons because they are not involved in any kind of bond formation and hence these are reducing sugars apart from monosaccharides we will see that disaccharides are also reducing but we have certain exceptions okay so all monosaccharides are reducing apart from this we have disaccharides such as lactose okay maltose these are also these are also reducing in nature okay now one important point sucrose is 
सुक्रोज इज नॉन रेड्यूसिंग ओके सुक्रोज इज नॉन रेड्यूसिंग सो वी विल सी द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सुक्रोज बट विद दिस डिस्कशन वी कैन टेल दैट वाई सुक्रोज इज नॉन रेड्यूसिंग बिकॉज प्रॉबेबली इट्स कार्बोन कार्बन इज नॉट राइट एंड दैट मस्ट बी इन्वॉल्व इन सर्टन बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन सो द कार्बोनिल कार्बन कार्बोनिल कार्बन ऑफ सुक्रोज इज इन्वॉल्व इन बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन ओके इन्वॉल्व इन बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस रीजन द सुक्रोज इज नॉन रेड्यूसिंग सो दिस इज अबाउट द रेड्यूसिंग एंड नॉन रेड्यूसिंग सो दिस ओके नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ डाई सेटेलाइट सो वॉट आर डाई सेटेलाइट वी हैव सीन इन द लास्ट क्लास दैट डाई सेटेलाइट आर वॉट डाई सेटेलाइट आर इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू शुगर मॉलिक्यूल्स सो डाई सेटेलाइट कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू शुगर मॉलिक्यूल्स और वेन यू हाइड्रोलाइज डाई सेटेलाइट two different or two same kind of sugar molecules can be formed okay it consists of two sugar molecules and how they are linked so in the case of carbohydrate the linkage is by linked by glycosidic bonds we saw the formation of glycosidic bonds so they are linked by glycosidic bonds and how glycosidic bonds are formed so glycosidic bonds glycosidic bonds how they are formed formed by release of water molecule right they are formed by release of water molecules right so suppose this is your one this is your one uh, sugar molecule this is your second sugar molecule so the water molecule will come from from one molecule oh and the second molecule h right so this will leads to the these water molecule will be released and you will have one structure you will have a structure something like this right you will have a, you will have a structure something like this okay so this will be the structure and this will be your glycosidic bond okay now if we talk about the types of the glycosidic bond we have two types the first type is known as the first type is known as alpha bond alpha linkage can say or alpha glycosidic bond so what do we have in alpha linkage so the alpha linkage will look something like this the structure that i have drawn so this is alpha linkage so from where it will be formed so suppose your sugar molecules both of the sugar molecules are alpha okay so this is say alpha glucose this is this is alpha glucose okay because it will have ch2h and again you have different another alpha glucose okay you have another alpha glucose so oh is here this is your another oh this is your ch2 oh so this is again alpha glucose so in this case when the bond formation will take place it will look something like this here the oh of this this oh and this h it will together make the water molecule and it will release and the bond will look something like this and this bond will be called as alpha because this is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and again here 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so what we are see that the first carbon of one glucose and the fourth carbon of second glucose is making the bond so the bond that will represent is because it is linear it will be alpha and then 1 four okay because first and fourth first carbon of the one glucose molecule and fourth carbon of another molecule is making the bond so it will form alpha 14 glycosidic linkage it will form alpha 14 glycosidic linkage okay so this is this one type of linkage the second what do we have we have beta linkage we have beta linkage now what do we have in the beta linkage so in beta linkage suppose this is any sugar molecule and it is looking something like this it is looking oh this is h you have another sugar molecule and it is looking something like this it has oh molecule at the top okay and this is h so in this case 
this hydroxyl group and this H. This H won't participate in bond formation, but this OH and this H will participate in bond formation and it will cause release of water. And the bond that will be formed will look something like this. Will look, so this is your one, this is your second, right? So the bond that will be formed will be something like this. So it will be not linear like this, it will be in this shape, okay? So this will be the bond and this will be called as beta glycosidic linkage. And again, this is one, this is one, two, three, four. So this will also form beta one, four linkage, right? So it will also form beta one, four linkage. So this is how we name the glycosidic bonds. We will see it more in upcoming slides when we draw the structure of disaccharides. Okay. So this is disaccharide structure. So the first structure of the disaccharide that we will study is maltose. So maltose, where it is present, it is present in malt sugars. It is present in malt sugars. And what it is made up of? So the maltose is, it is made up of, it is made up of alpha D glucose, alpha D glucose, and alpha D glucose. Like two alpha D glucose together mix maltose. So alpha D glucose and alpha D glucose. So the structure that we are seeing here is alpha D glucose. And second is also alpha D glucose. Okay. Now, when the glycosidic, uh, when the bond formation will take place, how will it look like? The structure will look like something like this. So the structure will be, structure will be something like this. It will be, so you have one, so this is OH, this is OH, OH, CH2OH. Similarly, similar will be the case here also, right? The OH, OH, right? So this is the structure of maltose, okay? Now, if we talk about the linkage, what kind of linkage we are seeing here? So if you number, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if you look at the numbering, what carbon molecules are involved in bond formation and what kind of linkage it is? So the linkage we are seeing is linear, something like this, right? And this kind of linkage, this kind of linkage is what? Alpha linkage, right? And the second thing, what carbon molecules are involved? So of the first glucose, the first carbon molecule is involved. And of the second glucose, the fourth carbon molecule is involved. Hence, it becomes alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. So, in case of maltose, the kind of linkage do we have is alpha 1,4 linkage, right? Then, this is the structure that I have just drawn. So, this is similar to what I have drawn. I have just added for the clarity purpose, okay? Now, one more important thing to notice here is, that the carbonyl group, apart from, even after the linkage, one of the carbonyl group is free, right? This carbonyl group is free. And hence, this sugar becomes reducing, right? So, because what are reducing sugars? The reducing sugars are the one whose carbonyl group, carbon is free. So, in the case of maltose, we can clearly see the carbonyl carbon is free. Hence, this, it has, since it has free carbonyl carbon, free carbonyl carbon, so it is what? Reducing sugar. It is reducing sugar. Okay. So this is the maltose and it is also the example of alpha 1 for glycosidic linkage. Right. Now, the next structure that we will study is lactose. So what is lactose? So lactose is, it is made up of, it is made up of beta d beta d galactose it is made up of beta d galactose and, and beta d glucose and beta d glucose okay and where this lactose is present lactose is present in it is present in milk sugar it is present in milk sugar okay now the first structure here what is what it is so we can see it by the orientation. First, start with carbon one, 
So here the OH is above. It means it is beta. And since the fourth OH is also above, so it is galactose, right? It is beta D galactose. Now the second structure, what do we have? We have OH above, hence it is beta. The fourth carbon, the fourth carbon OH is down. It means it is glucose, beta D glucose, right? So what kind of bond or what kind of structure will be formed here? So the structure that will be formed, if you see, so it will be something like this. So this is your galactose. This is your galactose. And the second is something like this. This is your glucose, right? This is your beta D glucose. Now the bond, how the bond formation will take place? The bond will form something like this, right? So this bond is like this. Okay, this is the glycosidic bond, and this is the first position here one, two, three, fourth, fifth, right? So, this is their fourth position. But this, since the bond is like this, so it will be beta one, four glycosidic, glycosidic linkage. It is beta one, four glycosidic linkage. And this is the structure. This is what I was talking about. So, this is the bond. This is the kind of bond that is formed, right? And hence it is beta 1, 4 glycosidic bond because this is carbon number 1, this is carbon number 4. Again, if you look at the carbonyl carbon, in this case also, carbonyl carbon is free. So, the, since the carbonyl carbon is free, lactose is also, lactose is reducing, right? Since it is free, lactose is reducing, okay? So, lactose is also reducing. Now, the third type of uh, uh, disaccharide that you will study is sucrose. Okay. Now, this sucrose, this sucrose is made up of the sucrose, it is made up of what? Alpha D glucose. It is made up of alpha D glucose and beta D fructose. Okay. It is made up of alpha D glucose and beta D fructose. Okay, and this sucrose it is present the table sugar. So the sugar that we use, right? Table sugar, sugar cane. So the sucrose are present in table sugar, sugar cane. Now let's draw the structure of sucrose. So what it is saying, it has alpha D glucose. Okay, it has alpha D glucose. So how does the structure of alpha D glucose looks like? Alpha hai, so it will have OH. Below, this is your CS2H. I'm just drawing this much. The rest of the diagram we know. So this is alpha D glucose. Now, what else we have? We have beta D fructose. So what is the structure of beta D fructose? So the beta D fructose will look something like this. Okay, sorry. The beta D fructose will look something like this. So since it is beta, the OH will be above. Right, and this will be your CS2OH. This will be your CS2OH and H. Okay, and rest. Okay, so this is first position. Similarly, this is first position. Sorry, this is first position. This is second. This is second position. But in the case of glucose, so this is alpha D glucose, and this is beta D fructose. Now, in sucrose, what happens? In suppose the bond formation will take place between this first and second carbon. Okay, so OH of first carbon and H of the second carbon of fructose, they will involve in the bond formation and it will cause release of water molecule. It will cause release of water molecule and hence the structure that will be formed, the structure that will be formed will look something like this. The structure will look something like this okay so it will look we have this is your fructose this is your fructose and this is your second position this is your cs2h this is your cs2h just a second. yeah so this is your cs2h fourth First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. 
So the bond, the bond will look, the bond will look something like this. Okay. So and this bond is known as this is this linkage is known as beta one two. Sorry, because it has glucose and fructose both. So it its bond will be something different. Okay. So its name will be something different. So the name will be the first carbon. The first moiety that we have is glucose, right? So in the first carbon, we have glucose. So we'll write blue. Okay. Now its first carbon is involved in bond formation. So it will be one alpha because it's alpha glucose, right? So it will be one alpha. And in the second carbon, we have beta beta fructose, right? And its second carbon is involved in the bond formation. So it will become two beta. And since it is fructose structure, we can write fructose FRU. And this is glucose one alpha two beta fructose glycosidic linkage. Glycosidic linkage. Okay. So this is how the name works because we have alpha glucose and of this glucose, first carbon molecule is involved in the bond formation. And we have beta fructose in which the second carbon molecule is involved in the bond formation. So the name will be glucose one alpha two beta fructose glycosidic linkage. And this kind of linkage is present in the sucrose. Now, what is the important thing? So in the case of sucrose, we studied that it is non-reducing in nature, right? We we saw that sucrose is non-reducing. Now we can see through the structure that what is the reason, right? Because here what we have seen, this the first structure is of glucose and its carbonyl carbon is this one. In the case of fructose, the carbonyl carbon is second carbon, right? And both of these are involved in the bond formation. So the carbonyl carbon is not free. And because of this reason, sucrose is non-reducing, right? Okay. Now, apart from non-reducing, sucrose is also known as Sucrose is also known as invert sugar. It is also known as invert sugar. Now, what is invert sugar? So, the sucrose, they are originally dextrorotatory. Okay. They are dextrorotatory. Now, what do you mean by dextrorotatory? It means that sucrose, they rotate. Plane polarized right, they'll rotate plane polarized right in right direction, in right or clockwise direction. Okay, so when you pass the plane polarized light through this sucrose mixture, it will rotate it into the clockwise direction, right? But what happens if you hydrolyze sucrose? Okay, so upon Hydrolysis of sucrose. Upon hydrolysis of sucrose. So, suppose this is your sucrose, you have sucrose mixture. Okay, you have sucrose, you have sucrose mixture. Now, you hydrolyze it. So, you do the hydrolysis. So, if you do the hydrolysis of sucrose, what, what will be present in the mixture? So, the sucrose is made up of what? Glucose and fructose. So the mixture will contain glucose plus fructose. And that is alpha D glucose and beta. Right? Beta fructose. Okay. Now, if you pass, if you pass plain polarized light, if you pass plain polarized light through this mixture, okay. Now the light will be light will rotate in the left direction. Light will rotate in left direction. Light will rotate in left direction. That makes this mixture, that makes this mixture levorotatory. So this mixture, mixture become, mixture become what? Levorotatory. Levorotatory. So because of this reason, because the sucrose originally is dextrorotatory, but if we hydrolyze the sucrose, the mixture that will be produced will become levorotatory because it will uh, rotate the light in the left direction. Because of this, it is known as inward sugar because it changes the direction of the sugar. Uh, sorry, changes the direction of the 
plain polarized right upon hydrolysis and due to this the sucrose is known as invert sugar okay so this is about the major or the most commonly used monosaccharides uh, sorry disaccharides but apart from this let's see two more uh, so this is one sucrose is one non reducing sugar so uh, there are certain other non reducing sugars so majority of sugars are reducing in nature but there are certain other non reducing sugars so the one example is sucrose the second example is free halose free halose okay so apart from sucrose the another is free halose it is also a disaccharide which is made up of glucose like two glucose molecule so now we can ask that the maltose was also made up of two glucose molecules and free halose is also made up of two glucose molecule so what is the difference so difference is there in their linkage so in the case of maltose the linkage was between alpha 1 fold right between first and fourth molecule of carbon while in the case of free halose it is alpha 1 1 so it is alpha 1 1 linkage okay so if you imagine the alpha 1 like first carbon of one glucose and first carbon of another glucose and we know that in the case of glucose the first carbon is what it is a carbonyl bar so both the carbonyl carbons are involved in bond formation hence the tree halos become non reducing the second example of non reducing sugar is raffinose is raffinose now the raffinose it is not a disaccharide but it is a trisaccharide okay it is a trisaccharide that is made up of three sugar molecules and these three sugar molecules are what galactose plus glucose plus fructose okay so the three sugar molecules are glu galactose glucose and fructose and due to the bond formation between them is done in such a way that none of the carbonyl group is free the raffinose is also non reducing in nature okay so this is about the structure of uh, disaccharides so we have seen the structure of monosaccharides and three major disaccharide that is maltose lactose and sucrose and we saw that in all the three there are different kind of linkages or glycosidic bonds next we'll study about the polysaccharide structures so the polysaccharides we have also discussed in previous class that the polysaccharides these are of two types or based on their function so based on the function based on function sorry based on function polysaccharides are of two types polysaccharides are of two types the first one is storage polysaccharide first one is storage polysaccharide now what are storage polysaccharides the examples are starch glycogen starch glycogen and inulin okay and the second is second is structural polysaccharides second is structural polysaccharides okay and what are the example of structural polysaccharides there are multiple but major are cellulose chitin and peptidoglycan and peptidoglycans okay now we will see the structure and study about these polysaccharides one by one so the first let's start with the storage polysaccharide and the first one is the starch so what is starch so starch it is polymer of starch is a polymer of alpha d glucose okay it is a polymer of alpha d glucose okay and since it consists of only one type of monomer molecules that is alpha d glucose starch is homopolymer it is homopolymer in nature and structure if you'll see it is branched it is branched okay now how does the starch looks like so starch looks something like this okay so this is just a two chains but it has multiple chains and multiple branches okay 
So what we are seeing, we are seeing that in this structure, it is written, it has two type of glycosidic link linkage or glucoside linkage. The one is the main one or the majorly present is alpha 1,4. Okay. So this linkage, this linkage, if you see this linkage, this, this, what we are seeing, we are seeing that this is, these are alpha glucose and the linkage is between one and four molecule, fourth and first molecule. Hence it is alpha 1,4 linkage, right? So this is alpha 1,4 linkage. But apart from alpha 1,4 linkage, we can also see a different type of linkages as well, right? There's different type of linkage as well. And this linkage is present here, right? This is present here. And this linkage is known as alpha 1,6 linkage. Why? Because if you see, this linkage is between first and sixth carbon. First carbon of one sugar molecule and sixth carbon of another. Hence, it is known as alpha 1,6 group, uh, glucoside linkage or glycosidic linkage. Okay. So, the starch has two linkages, uh, two type of linkages. So, we can write the starch. Starch has two glycosidic bonds, two types, not two, two types of glycosidic bonds. Okay. And secondly, now, this uh, starch, they are digested by enzyme. Which enzyme? They are digested. The starch is digested by enzyme known as amylase. Digested by amylase enzymes. Okay. Now, what will we find upon hydrolysis of starch? So, upon hydrolysis, if you hydrolyze starch, what do we find? So, it depends what kind of bond is breaking. Okay. So, if upon hydrolysis, if, if, if break one fourth bond, like one fourth glycosidic bond, then what you will get is maltose. You will get maltose. Okay. And if you will break one sixth bond, then you will get isomaltose. So, in the first time or first round of hydrolysis, you will get this much structure together. You will get this much structure together. Okay. When you will further hydrolyze it, you will get glucose. That's true. But if you hydrolyze first time, you will get structure something like this. Okay. Now, what else do we have to study about the starch? So if you, if you look at the starch, so this is only two lines, but if you draw the starch, it will look something like this. Okay. It will look something like this. Right? It will look something like this. Now, in this, if you see, it has two parts. The first part that is completely linear, right? And the second part that is has some kind of branching. So this is the first part, this is the second part. Now, the first reason is known as amylose. The first part is known as amylose, and it is what? It is linear polysaccharide. It is linear, right? It is linear. Okay. It is linear and it constitutes 20% of the starch. It constitutes 20% of the starch. And this is water soluble. This is water soluble and it has alpha 1 4 linkage. Okay. Since it is linear, it has alpha 1 4 linkage. And this structure is helical. It is hel has helical structure. Okay, so it will look as it will look something like this. Okay. Now, the branch part or the second part is amylopectin. It is known as amylopectin. And it is what? It is branched. Right? So this we can see it has branchings. This has branchings. Okay. And it constitutes 80 to 90 percent of the starch. 80 to 90 percent of the starch. It is water insoluble. And it is water insoluble and it has both. What kind of linkage it will have? It will have both alpha 1, 4 and alpha 1, 6 linkage. Okay. So this is all about the starch, which is the part. What it is? What is structural? Oh, sorry, storage polysaccharide, right? It is storage polysaccharide. Now, in the next class, we will study about the more polysaccharide that is glycogen. Inoline and 
other structural polysaccharides. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you.